Hey guys, how's it going? So in this video, I'm going to talk about a very interesting problem. Usually you would see this problem if you are running some kind of a statistical course or maybe a probability related mathematics lecture, physics lecture or something like that. So the problem is very simple. We have some random walkers walking on a 2D grid. So the grid would be 2D. So let's have a look at the problem. So we have two random walkers in this problem by the name of Anna and Bob who are starting from point A and point B respectively. So Anna starts from this point, Bob starts from this point over here. Now what we know is that Anna can either go up or she can either go right with a probability of 50% each. And similarly Bob can either go down or he can either go left again with a probability of 50% each. So that means that he has a 50% probability or a 1 by 2 chance of either going on left or either going down. Now the question is, or rather the problem, the puzzle or riddle is what is the probability of the protagonists meeting each other? Now let me show you some animations or simulations showing what I have just stated. So here we see that Anna starts from point A and you can see this is a random simulation that I have uh, written using Python and you see that sometimes she goes up, up, right, up, right, right, then again right and then up and so on. So here is just a random simulation showcasing the problem that is she either goes up or right with a probability of 50% each. Although one interesting thing to see here is that once she has reached the, let's say, the uh, borders of this 2D grid. So let me just uh, mark the borders of this 2D grid. So whenever she's on the border, for example, she's on the rightmost uh, point, then she won't uh, go right once again. She will be bound within these borders or these boundaries. So if she's here, then she can only go up, 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 and up because she only goes either right or up. So if she's on the border, she cannot uh, go right anymore. Similarly, if she's on the upper border, then she cannot go um, further up. So she will only go right. Yeah. So this is something interesting that uh, you should remember. And then similarly, we have a simulation for Bob where he goes either down or left with a probability of 50% each. These are random simulations that I created in Python and I have put them in this presentation. However, don't let the previous two animations fool you into thinking that um, they are going one after the other. That is, first Anna is going and then Bob is going. That might maybe confuse you a little because then how will they meet? So the, actually the uh, process is that they both start from the A and B points respectively at the same point. Uh, at the uh, same time they start and then um, they do their random box uh, together. Yeah. So. Uh, this is a more realistic example or a simulation of what actually is happening and we just need to figure out what is the probability of the meeting. So in order to approach this problem, I would ask you one question. How many steps do you think it takes for the protagonist Anna and Bob to meet? For example, if they only take one step, Anna can either go up or she could have gone right. So she could have been here or she could have been here. Similarly, Bob could have been here or here after one step. Do you think they can meet with just one step? Of course not. Now let's consider the case where they have taken two steps. So Bob, after two steps, could either be here after taking two down steps or here after taking two left steps, or he could be like this, um, left down or down left. So he could be here, here, or here. Similarly, Anna, after two steps, could be here, here, or here, like this. I hope it is clear to you. So again, we see that even two steps aren't enough for the protagonist to meet. What about if they take three steps? Here again, we see that Anna could be here after three steps. Anna could be here if she just went up all the way. Or she could be right, up, right. So she could be here. She could be right, up, up. Here, she could have gone up, up, right. Again, that leads to this point. So all other point, uh, paths will just lead to these four points that we have here, one, two, three, and four. So Anna, after three steps, can be on these four points. And similarly, by symmetry, we can say that Bob also, after three steps, he could be here, he could be here, actually. One, two, and three, 
one, two, and three, or he could be here as already shown, or he could be here like this. So once again, we see that three steps aren't also enough for Anna and Bob to actually meet. So the answer actually is that they, it is possible for them to meet only after four steps. So here is a good example. So Anna went right, right, up, right. Bob went left, down, 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 and they managed to meet. It's only possible um, for them to meet on these um, diagonal grid points, as you can see here. And now let me also tell you that while I say that uh, it is they will meet uh, after four steps, it's not really guaranteed. It is possible for them to meet after four steps. I'm not saying that they will definitely meet after four steps, which is illustrated in this simulation very well. So here uh, I have uh, the simulation running only up to four steps. So here you can see, for example, um, they go like this, and after four steps, they are not meeting. Now in another simulation, they go four steps, and they do actually meet here. Now in another simulation, they go four steps, and again, they don't meet. Another simulation, they go four steps, they don't meet. And another simulation, they go four steps, and again, they don't meet. So it is possible to meet after four steps, however, it's not guaranteed. And also, uh, you can clearly see uh, up till now that while it is possible for them to meet at four steps, it's again impossible for them to meet for any steps greater than four. Now, this was all a very visual way of thinking. However, we could have also proven this by just using plain old mathematics. So, Anna takes eight steps to reach point B as illustrated in this simulation. You can see that she can either go all the way up, all the way right, using four steps for up, four steps for right, and so on, like this or like this, and no matter how many paths you take, she will always take eight steps to reach point B. And by symmetry, Bob also reach, takes eight steps to reach point A. So what we can infer from this information, so let's say Anna takes K steps. So once Anna has taken K steps from point A, then Bob has also taken K steps from point B. However, the distance that is uh, Anna away from point A is given by just k because she has taken k steps from point a so she's k steps away from point a similarly since bob is eight steps further from point a if he takes k steps towards point a he would actually be eight minus k steps away from point a so anna is k steps away from point a while bob is eight minus k steps from uh, away from point a and for them to meet these two distances should of course be equal therefore we get that k can only be four as you can see from this mat, Anna is k steps from point A, while Bob is 8 minus k. If we equate them, we get k equals 4. So that was um, another proof to say that, yeah, they will only meet when they have taken 4 steps. Now, after 4 steps, Anna and Bob can only be on the grid points belonging to the main diagonal. I think I made it abundantly clear using some previous simulations, so I will simulate it again. But now, in order to calculate the probability, of Anna and Bob meeting, the next step that we need is the number of ways in which Anna and Bob can reach these diagonal grid points. So first we calculated the number of steps after which they can meet. Next task is to calculate the number of ways in which they can reach these common meeting points that belong to the main diagonal. So actually here is the answer, but we will work on arriving to this answer. So let's start our counting. So let's say Anna takes one step towards the right. So the number of ways in which she could have reached this point is just one. She can only go right and reach this point. Similarly, to reach this point over here, she only needs to take one step up. So there is just one way to reach this particular point. Now, what about this point? In how many ways can Anna reach this point? She can either go up or she, and then right, or she can either go right before and then go up. So there are actually two ways to reach this point. So she can go right up or up right and reach this point. That gives us two ways. Now, what about this point over here? Again, she can only go up and up to reach this point. Therefore, there's just one way in which she can reach this point. What about this point over here then? Uh, she can only go right and right to reach this point. Therefore, there's again just one way in which she can reach this point. Now, what about this point over here? Again, I will say that she only can go three steps up to reach this point therefore we get one step for this point as well now what about this point 
So this point is a bit tricky because she can reach here in multiple ways. So what she can do is she can either go up, up, and then right. Right to reach this point, that would be one way. She could either go up, right, and up, or she could go right, up, and up. So that would give us two more ways to reach this point. And the total number of ways she can reach this point would be three over here. Now, what about this point? In how many ways can she reach this point? Again, I will say she can only take three steps to the right to reach this point. So there was just one way to reach it. Now, what about this point over here? Now, by symmetry, you can already say that she will take three ways. But again, let me just show you that she can either go right, up, right, up, and right, or she can go up, right, and right, or she can go right, right, and up. So again, there are three ways to reach this point and so on. Now what you can see is that you are seeing some kind of a number pattern over here. And this is a very popular number pattern known as the Pascal's Triangle. We can already see, already see we have one, one, that is here. Then we have one, two, one, that is here. And then we have one, three, three, one, that is here. So we can already predict that the number of ways in which they can reach the diagonal point would be one, um, sorry, four, six, four, and one using this Pascal's triangle. However, we can also just go ahead and quickly verify it. So she can reach this point in just one way by going all the way up. She can reach this point also in just one way by going all the way right. So there is, uh, so we have the one, one here. And then to reach this point, she can either go up, 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 and then right, or she can go up, right, up, up. That would be two ways. She could go up, up, right, up, or she could go right, up, 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 giving us two more ways. And there are basically four ways to reach this point. So we get four over here. And similarly, by symmetry, we can say that she will take four steps to reach this point as well. And we have what we predicted. We predicted using the Pascal's triangle that this would be the case. Now, what about the center point? Again, I'm not going to show it because it gets really complicated, but of course, uh, she takes six ways to reach this particular point. Now, what about Bob? In how many ways can Bob reach these particular three points? Of course, it would be the same because um, the situation for Bob is basically identical to the situation for Anna. He will take the same number of ways to reach these diagonal grid points. Now, what about some mathematical formula to predict this? So this formula that you are seeing on your screen right now can be used to predict the number of ways in which they reach these diagonal grid points. So in this formula, n goes from 0, I'm um, sorry, n uh, basically means the grid size, that is 4 in this case, and k goes from 0 to n, that is the grid size. So for example, for the first case, we will have um, for the first case, we will have a uh, 4 factorial divided by, so for the first case over here, we will have 4 factorial divided by um, k would be 0 for here, and k would be 4 here. So we'll have 0 factorial, 4 minus 0 factorial, and that would be 1, which is what we have over here. So we already had that, and she will read this point in one way, and that, and so on. So this is a good mathematical formula to predict the number of ways in which they can reach the diagonal grid points, both Anna and Bob. And I have already stated that by symmetry, Bob reaches these points in the same number of ways. Now we are really approaching towards the solution of this problem. So for a given common point, if Anna reaches there in x steps, then of course by symmetry, Bob will also reach there in x steps where x can be 1, 4, 6, 4, or 1 then the total number of ways for Anna and Bob to meet at this particular common point would be x squared. So basically, I'm, what I'm saying is that if Anna reaches some particular point, let's say this point, in four ways, she reaches this in four ways, then Bob will also reach this in four ways. So for each way, let's say there are four ways, uh, numbers one, two, and three, and four, so for each four ways that Anna could take, Bob also has four options to reach there. So let's say Anna took this path, then for this particular path, Bob can take all these four paths. So we will get four ways, then for this path that Anna takes, 
Bob again has four options, so we get another four ways. And then if Anna takes this pass, then we Bob has another four ways for this plus four and so on. So what we get is four squared over here. So that is why I say that. Uh, the total number of ways for Anna and Bob to meet at a particular common point would be x squared. If they are going to meet here, then they can only reach this in one square base, that is one. They can reach here in 16 ways, this in 36, this in 16, and this in just one way. So that is uh, the total number of ways in which Bob and Anna can basically meet. So in order to calculate the probability of Anna and Bob meeting, we are going to use the formula number of ways they meet divided by the total number of paths they can take. So the number of ways they meet, as I've already stated, would be one squared for this point, four squared for this point, six squared for this point, four squared for this point, and one squared for this point. So this would be the total number of ways they can meet. And then in order to calculate the total number of paths, let's consider the following. So we know that walkers meet after four steps. And at each step, they had an option to make two choices either go right and up for Anna or left and down for Bob. So basically after four steps, what they have done is they have made up till now two times two times two times two, that is two to the power of four choices for each person. So for example, Anna, after four steps, she has made two to the power of four choices. So she had the, the total number of paths that she could have taken would be two to the power of four. Similarly, Bob also after four steps, he could have taken he, the number of paths he could have been on was 2 to the power of 4 and therefore for the two walkers in total there are 2 times 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 4 choices that gives us 4 to the power of 4 choices or rather total paths that A and B together could have taken. So now that we have both the numbers that is we have the total number of ways in which they can meet, we have the total number of paths, what we can do is we can calculate the probability very easily that is that comes out to something like 70 divided by 256 that is about 0.273 or 27.3 percent so the probability of the protagonist meeting would be 27.3 percent on a 4 by 4 grid in our example and that is the solution to this problem now if you are curious then you may also watch this video further because now what i'm going to discuss is the case about n by n grid so in this case we have a general n by n grid and in this if you try to calculate the probability of a and b meeting then it is very simple you don't have to go into much math because everything has already been discussed i have already told you that whenever they want to meet or reach the diagonal point the number of ways in which they can reach the points on the main diagonal is combination n zero where combination n0 is defined as n factorial divided by 0 factorial n factorial. Yeah, I hope uh, you remember this from the previous slides. Now, um, so basically the total number of ways in which they reach these diagonal grid points, uh, they meet on these diagonal grid points rather, would be n0 square, n k square, combination n n square, and like this you get this series, right? And then you can further simplify it. I won't explain much of the math here because it is rather trivial. N0 can always be written as NN. NK can also be written as N, N minus K combination. Similarly, NN combination can also be written as N0. So therefore, instead of writing these squares that we had earlier, we can decompose them like this. And once you have this expression, it basically means something like choosing N quantities from 2n quantities so basically we have a combination of 2n n divided by 4 to the power n so this basically gives us the probability of a and b meeting on an n by n grid and again you can actually further simplify it by using an asymptotic form of the 2n n combination which gives something like 4 to the power n divided by root by n and if you don't know what this sign means it means that we are talking about asymptotic forms so this is not going to be exact but um, within um, and, but uh, with large number of n you may get something um, this would be a good approximation so if you plug this value back into a formula then we get the probability of a and b meeting for n n by n grid 
approximately 1 over root pi n where n is very large. So that is the expression for an n by n grid. And yeah, so this is rather interesting that you see the occurrence of pi in this formula. So this gives us a very nice way to approximate pi. So we can basically simulate an n by n uh, grid random walk of two protagonists and then just uh, calculate the simulated probability of n be meeting each other and then just equate it to one over root pi n and we get an approximation for pi. Now finally, I have very, something very interesting to show you. I've written a Python code that simulates this 4x4 grid 2D random walk for Anna and Bob and we will see that we actually do get a probability of 27.3% after a lot of trials. So here we have made up till now two trials and we have managed to meet once. So therefore the probability right now with two trials seems to be 0.5. Now let's continue our trials. So now again, we ran three trials we didn't meet. After four trials, we haven't met. After five, we haven't met. After six, we haven't met. And after eight, we do manage to meet once again. So now n meet will actually become two. So it became two. And now the new probability is something around 0 0.25, which is quite close to our answer. And then again, if we keep the trials running, then again, they meet at the ninth trial and the probability changes once again, then we continue. And they do manage to meet once again at the 10th trial. We have a big increase in the probability. And now, basically, we can just let the trials of the simulation going. So let me just go ahead and fast forward it. So we can see that around 77 trials, we are getting a 0.25 probability. Keep on increasing it, going to 100, we get something like 0.28. Then we further increase to 200. At 200 trials, we get something around 0.28 and so on. And after one 500 trials, we get the probability as 28.8 percentage. So you can see that um, as we increase and we are reaching our answer. So that is it. So that is the problem or the puzzle or riddle of 2D random walkers working on a grid and their probability of meeting. And I would like to give a big shout out to a YouTube video from which uh, this video that I made is heavily inspired upon. And uh, I just made this video because I have written a lot of Python codes to simulate this. And I wanted to share those simulations with you. And I have linked the, uh, the, those codes in the description down below. So you can even go ahead and download those codes and, and or even download this PowerPoint presentation and learn more about the problem at your own pace. So that is it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. In case you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day.